Flexibility is a big theme in recruiting in talent acquisition today. We're all talking about how we need to be more flexible, how workers need to be more flexible, how flexibility can be an employer brand proposition. So in this TA Talks, we're going to be talking with Peter Hogg of Schneider Electric. He's the UK IE Head of Talent Acquisition. And we're going to be discussing how Schneider Electric, a massive organisation, uh, more than 100,000 employees, has embraced flexibility in its workforce and what that means for it. Peter, how are you? Hi, Johnny. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Welcome to Dublin. Thank you. So, Peter, Schneider Electric, can you give us a bit of background in terms of who is Schneider, what kind of a business it is, and maybe some background as to how and when you joined? Sure. So, Schneider Electric is about 144,000 people globally, about 130 countries. We're an energy management and automation company. Um, and so, uh, we're involved in uh, really addressing the energy dilemma, which says that as a, as a, as a, as a, uh, as a planet, we're going to increase the amount of energy we use by about 50% over the next 30 years. But equally, we need to reduce the amount of CO2 that we use. And so Schneider has a number of products and solutions that we can bring to that table. And, um, and so it's a great time for us at Schneider. Tell me about uh, your individual situation around your boss, your working environment, your team. It's a little bit different than the typical talent acquisition team relationship. Yeah, so, um, so I've been at Schneider for a little over three years. Uh, in that time, I've had two bosses. Uh, the first um, I had for about the first nine months, and I met, I met her once during my time at Schneider. Um, and my current boss, um, I see him twice a year, maybe three times a year. Um, but they're two of the best bosses I've ever had. Um, and so, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's unique, but I feel really close to my current boss uh, and my previous boss because we've got regular... Uh, one-to-one sessions where we're just really open and honest um, but also we come together as a peer group and as a team regularly uh, every week to talk about what we're all up to to talk about initiatives and projects has this always been the way in schneider has it always been this culture of flexible working for for people who don't know schneider is schneider a modern tech startup who have all these fabulous ideas and how to fix the world's problems? No, so Schneider is a, a really big, clunky global matrix that's been around for over 100 years. Uh, Schneider have done, in the last 10 years or so, have done more than 200 acquisitions. So there's a lot of legacy there, a lot of complexity, a lot of matrix. Um, and I think Schneider, um, within the space that we're in, which is energy management, engineering, technology, um, has, has really taken a look at itself over the last few years, I think, and decided that we really need to, to shift um, towards flexibility, we really need to start to embrace diversity. We really need to actually have a, a sensible look out at the market and say, you know, what is the market telling us about what we need to be? And I think Schneider is 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 becoming pretty agile. Is this because you feel hey, you got to compete with the Googles of the world for employer branding competitions, or why is Schneider doing this? Uh, I think that's part of it, definitely. Um, you know, a, a lot of guys coming out of university today, for example, want to work for brands that they've heard of or bland, brands that they believe in um, or brands that their friends have heard of or brands that they've seen on Facebook or other social media. Uh, so Schneider needs to get into that space for sure. Um, but also, I think, you know, more broadly, there is a shortage of, of tech talent. There's a shortage of engineering talent. And Schneider, you know, we as a business need to, need to really appeal to those guys. We need to have a proposition that stacks up. So before we sat down, you had indicated to me there was kind of three big themes. They were the flexibility, diversity, and well-being. How does flexibility play out in real time within the talent acquisition team for you and your boss and then your team and their relationship with you? Sure, so, um, so in my team, we're spread out across various locations. Um, I've got members of my team who work from home. Uh, I've got members of my team who uh, sort of work between home and the office um, and have a reasonably high level of flexibility. I've got members of my team who are based uh, in the office most of the time. So we've got a, a fairly good split. And I, I myself, um, I'm rarely in the same place uh, for two consecutive days. Um, but you know, we've got a WhatsApp group within the team that we use to connect and collaborate. We've got tools like WebEx or Skype for Business that we use. Um, and then of course, you know, I have regular interaction with, with my team. You know, I, speak, I speak to most of them pretty much daily, one way or another. Uh, we've got a weekly one-to-one where you know, we can be really informal but honest. Um, and we have our weekly team meetings as well. So whilst we're dispersed um, and we travel quite a bit, we stay close. Well, what I, you, know, you need a Friday morning off. You have a family, you have lots of kids more on the way. Um, 
I, I, you know, what's the process of, I need a Friday morning off, I need to take a long lunch. How does that work out for you and then for your team with you? I, I, I think the answer is, so the answer, Johnny, is if someone asks for some flexibility at work, be that to take an afternoon off or to go to a, you know, a school event or, or to view a house or the doctors or whatever, the answer is always yes. The answer is never no. Um, I think there's a courtesy that says, you know, FYI guys, you know, I'm going to be out this afternoon or whatever. Um, but the, I guess the culture of the team, both looking to my team, my direct reports, but also to my boss and my peers, is that the answer is always yes. Um, really all that matters is output. Um, output and attitude, I think. And, uh, and if those two things are in place, then actually, you know, the answer can always be yes. So you mentioned to me um, an afternoon where you decided you just needed some downtime and uh, I think you said you sent a beautiful photograph to your boss just to give an idea of what you were doing on the afternoon. Tell me about, tell me about that. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was, I think it was a Monday. It was a Monday afternoon and um, I, uh, the weather was amazing. And for me, I've, I like to do water sports. And, uh, and so to do the sort of water sports I do, I need no wind and lots of sun. And there was no wind and lots of sun. And I just had to get out. So, uh, so I left the office at three o'clock. I sent um, my boss, who I knew was out of the office that afternoon anyway, I sent him an email saying, saying Petra, I'm taking the afternoon off. Um, he emailed me back the next day and says, oh, Pete, well, you know, I hope you took the afternoon off. Um, and, uh, and I emailed him back and said, yeah, I did. I tried to make the most of it. And I had a picture of me uh, water skiing behind, uh, behind a speedboat. So uh, that's sort of, I think that, that sort of speaks to the sort of environment that we've got. You know, I, I don't need to wait for Petter to respond to me. Uh, I can just let him know what I'm up to. I can, I can give him the courtesy of knowing that, you know, everything's taken care of um, and that he totally trusts me. You mentioned the initiatives you guys have in place around diversity. And I know um, I was emceeing the in-house recruitment awards in the UK last year and your team were pipped to the post for a big award, but got an honorable mention, the only one of the night uh, for the efforts. You guys have done some seriously good work around there. Can you maybe give me an insight in terms of what diversity means in Schneider? Because it's different in a lot of businesses I come across. They have different focuses. You know, how is it measured? What are your goals? What are some of those initiatives? Yeah, sure. Okay, so it's a tough topic. You know, we're essentially a, a tech and engineering company, and and we know that universities don't put out more than about twenty percent female. If we talk about gender diversity um, in their uh, in their in their annual uh, output, um, well, we go for forty-two percent. That's our KPI as a talent acquisition team across permanent hires. And so that's a massively lofty goal. Um, actually, we're really close to that in our, in our, um, in our recruitment to date this year. Uh, we're just under that, just, uh, just ab about 40% right now, uh, which is a massive step forward for us. And, um, and we've been evolving over the last, we've been, been evolving our DNI strategy over the last two years or so. Um, and it's a credit to members of my team, but also others within the business um, who have been driving that locally. Um, but honestly, Johnny, the only way that this can work, and, and you know, this is my advice to anyone, is it has to come top down. Um, it has to start at the top uh, if it's really going to gain traction, because it's not easy. It's really not easy. So our, um, our chairman, um, he's a really strong advocate of, of all forms of diversity. In fact, he's a signatory of the um, He For She campaign and has been on the stage with the likes of Emma Watson, for example, at uh, Davos and other places. Uh, well, he's a really strong advocate and uh, ambassador of, of he for she and of, and of diversity more broadly. So that gives us locally the mandate to say to our local stakeholders and our business, look guys, you know, are you taking this seriously? Are you really thinking about it? Um, what does this mean for your hiring? Um, is it reasonable to suggest that you can like for like recruit, for example, all the time and, and really move the, the needle on diversity? Um, and that's a, a really real opportunity for us to partner with a business. Um, I think that's the sort of value add that we as talent acquisition need to be offering. Talk to me about this concept of like for like recruiting. Um, what is it? Um, how does it perhaps hold back diversity and what are maybe some of the solutions around that? Sure. So, so we as a business, I'm sure lots of business got this problem that, uh, that we've got an aging workforce. Um, in fact, we're going to drop off an aging cliff at some point, right? Um, but the, the reflex of of many businesses perhaps, and certainly it could be the case in our business, is that a hiring manager will lose, let's say an engineer of 20 years uh, with all that experience, um, perhaps not plan as far ahead as they might have done, and then panic and need to recruit someone like for like to do exactly the same job. Um, now that can work, but of course if you do that, you don't stand a hope in hell in moving the needle on diversity, right? Um, so that on the 
on the one hand. I guess on the other hand, we need to encourage these hiring managers to start thinking earlier and saying, well, actually, you know, do, do you need someone like for like? If you think earlier, how can you, can, you, can you build in the development of someone perhaps from a different background? You mentioned well-being as being also part of this holistic approach to how you attract talent and how you get more from talent. Um, and you mentioned an internal um, I think slogan you mentioned was around, it's more than a piece of, pr piece of fruit. Yeah. Talk to me about that well-being effort in, in, in Schneider and why it's more than a piece of fruit. Yeah, so that's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek sort of jibe at ourselves, I think, more than a piece of fruit. Uh, so so the, uh, the global strap line around, and it's a little bit cheesy, but it works, is uh, around making the most of our energy, uh, in, uh, both in the workplace, but also at home, right? So we want our people, um, we need to bring our whole self to work. And as an energy management company, you know, it's, it's interesting to think about well-being from a sort of personal energy point of view. Um, if you're stressed, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not eating properly, if you've fallen out with your boss, if you're not getting good feedback, um, that can really be a drain on your energy. Um, and, and we want our people to, to feel really engaged and empowered and, and energetic at work. Um, so, so that's the sort of headline here. More than a piece of fruit is, you know, of course, when, when you start on the journey of really trying to move the needle on well-being, well, the first thing that happens, Johnny, is, um, is the fruit bowls come out, right? Um, we have them here, Peter. Bananas, apples. <laughs> but equally, your people will look really happy, so um, maybe it works. We, we drink heavily. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got to think about it in more holistic terms, you know. Are you getting the development that you need? Are you getting the flexibility that you need? Do you, have you got the flexibility to, you know, to, to care for your elderly relatives or to go to a school event, as we've talked about already? Um, are you getting to have breakfast with your kids or seeing them before they go to bed at night? Um, are you, are you, you know, traveling to a point that's sustainable rather than spending your whole life in airports and hotels? We look at this from a holistic point of view, from a, you know, from a, a physical well-being, but also from a social and a mental health, uh, well-being point of view. And again, it's something which is permeating through the business. So, you know, top down, um, we've got well-being ambassadors and champions whose, whose job it is to make sure that these principles are getting embedded deep into our culture. Peter, your team, I think it's the organization has a great attitude to um, progression and a very transparent and open conversation about progression and development of people. Can you maybe tell me a little bit about how that plays out in your team and your attitude to it? Um, and so at Schneider, you know, we look at development um, as something which is, you know, kind of agile and moving all the time. We can't guarantee our people the next job that they want, their dream job. Perhaps, you know, perhaps they're, um, they can, you know, I, I can only have my boss's job when he leaves. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say we can't develop people and prepare people for their, ne their next job. So as part of the development review process and development plan process, which we have at Schneider, um, we'd encourage and, and challenge people to have at least three development goals all the time. And of those three development goals, one of them, at least one of them, maybe two of them, but at least one of them should relate to their current job in developing in role. But of course, one of them ought to also relate to preparing them for their next job, for what comes next. And we think that's really important. Um, and depending on where people are on their career will depend on you know, how, how, how fast they want to pursue their next position, but they should always have one eye on what comes next within Schneider. And of course, in a large global organization where we encourage mobility, um, local but also international mobility, then that's um, a real strength for the business. Now, if you look at my team, you know, my team is, is really diverse from a gender perspective, from a uh, national perspective, from a location perspective, we're a pretty, uh, from an age perspective, we're a pretty diverse bunch. Uh, right now, I've got a member of my team who is seconded into uh, a generalist role within HR, which is really exciting for that person. I've got a member of my team who is pursuing a role with our exact recruitment function at an EMEA's level, so outside a country, which is really exciting. Uh, and just recently, um, I waved goodbye to a member of my team uh, who has you know, been with us in, in the UK for about 18 months, and he's just taken a job with the talent acquisition team at Schneider Electric in Australia. Um, again, you know, mobility was really key for him. That was one of the reasons he wanted to pitch Schneider. So I think, I think we're kind of living proof of the fact that we're walking the talk on this at Schneider. And, and, and I guess in relationship to that, you know, attrition is really low. Um, we're keeping people engaged. We're giving people opportunity, um, which is something I think we're, we're, we're doing really well. Where do you see Schneider um in 18 months or even jump forward three years, as long as you've been here again, what would you like to see Schneider doing or what would you like to see, see the reality being at that point 
uh, in the future. Well, I want to see us continue along the, the fairly street, steep trajectory towards real um, rich diversity and inclusion. I think we're making great progress there. Um, of course, well-being is an important one for us as well. But really, the, the, the real shift which I really still want to see and which I'm really pushing myself in the business is this, is this um, uh, challenging like-for-like -like recruitment challenging like-for-like -like recruitment. So what does that mean? Well, it means we need to think more carefully about our workforce plans. It means we need to think more carefully about our early talent pipeline, um, our on-campus activity apprenticeships, which is a big deal in the UK right now with the levy. Um, I really, I see, a, I see a future where there's such fierce um, battling for talent and such scarcity of technical talent, um, where really we need to get to a position where, you know, we need to put ourselves in a position where we can actually tear up CVs. CVs don't matter anymore, right? What matters is we've got a, a framework for identifying talent, perhaps through st strength-based recruitment, for example, um, perhaps through the use of AI, um, better planning, better training, closer relationships with you know, academic institutions, so that we can tear up the CV, identify talent that, that really is gonna thrive in our, in our environment, and then nurture and develop that talent. That's, that, for me, is what I really wanna see Schneider shift towards um, in the coming years. It's not easy, um, but I think it's possible. I think the story very much to me is that you guys have seen that to bring in new talent to the organization, you need to have a proposition that sits up there amongst the best companies in the world. But also, the environment needs to be such that you get the most out of those individuals and they can bring them their whole selves to work sure. and deliver on that. Um, it's an aspiration I, I have no doubt others will want to, to take on, or maybe are already trying to take on in TA. Any last advice for, for those in the TA world who are saying that I want my organization to be more like that, or I'm trying this, but I'm struggling. What have been the kind of big, couple of big learnings for you around to make this work in this organization, these are the things to focus on? Okay, so, so flexibility is key. Um, let's not shackle our people, our, you know, our talented people, by telling them the hours they've got to work, being really rigid, the locations they've got to work, how much they should and shouldn't tra travel. I think that's a really important thing. I think really supporting people um, to what their career aspirations might be, really supporting them, possibly even outside of the organization, really builds buy-in and trust. Um, I think that's really important as well. Um, I think um, in terms of, if, if I'm looking at this from a broader talent acquisition perspective, um, and from a talent acquisition business partnering perspective, I think it's having a really close relationship with our managers. I mean, over the last two years, I've done so many miles um, driving, around, driving around the UK and Ireland, promoting what we can do, the value that we can add, um, and getting yourself into a position where you can have a consultative conversation with your stakeholder about diversity, about value proposition, about like-for-like -like recruitment, about strength-based recruitment. Um, so, you know, we can really bring that to the table and challenge these guys. Um, and that's something which we've totally got the backing of our leaders on um, and that we're really starting to see some impact. Um, I, I guess finally is have the backing of your leaders. Um, so much of these big initiatives and I think well-being, flexibility, diversity and inclusion are big initiatives. You know, they're real sort of gear changes, aren't they, in a company's culture need to come from above. They need to be credible and authentic. Um, and, uh, and we as a talent acquisition function have, have got a great position, we're in a great position where we can, um, we can kind of uh, role model those um, characteristics in the business, but also um, tell that story outside of the business, which is really exciting. Yeah, I think it's, it, there are interesting times, I know um, Josh Burson talks about 2017 as being the year where HR no longer was the thing to the side of the board. It has been seen as a lever to really try and instill change. And that you're seeing CEOs, COOs, CMOs talking about cultural well-being, wellness, uh, engagement as being drivers of business success, rather than just being the CHRO or head of HR, banging, banging that drum silently in the corner when everyone's trying to ignore uh, totally whoever that person is. So really interesting times, it's exciting to hear what you guys are doing. Um, been a pleasure to kind of listen to what that is and hoping to hear more over the next uh, 18 months. And thanks for joining us here in Dublin in Social Talent HQ. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Johnny. We'll be back with our next TA talk soon. Um, please, if you'd like to uh, tear, share your story with your organization, please do get in touch on the TA Talks page. Uh, we're always here to kind of listen to the best stories and share the best learning that we can to make TA a better profession. Mm -hmm.